Yo, what is up everybody? This is Noah. I am coming at you with another episode of Quick Codes where I take you from zero to hero in blockchain development. In this episode, I'm going to take you how to get the balance of all of the token accounts for your wallet on the Solana blockchain. Let's hop into it. All right, so here I'm in an empty repository called Solana-Tokens. Uh, and so the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and hit npm init. Uh, we'll just hit dash y. And so here you can see it's created a package JSON for us. Uh, the only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to be using TypeScript. So instead of index.js, we'll change that to ts. Um, and then we will go ahead and create a TypeScript file. So we can go ahead and touch index.ts here at the bottom. And you see that's made a TypeScript file for us. Awesome. And the last thing that we'll need to do is install another package. So we're going to do npm i and then we're going to do at solana slash web 3.js. Here you can see we've got successfully installed the solana web 3.js package with solana uh, web 3.js installed. We can go ahead and import that. So we will be importing connection from Solana Web 3.js. And we'll also be bringing in a type here uh, and that will be get program accounts. Filter. Awesome, next thing that we want to do is we can just create a main file. So we'll do async function main. And that's where we will create a connection. So we'll say const um, connection equals a new connection. And what we will do here is we will just paste in our quit node uh, endpoint here. Um, make sure that you aren't sharing this part publicly. If you're uploading it to a repo, this will give anyone access to your endpoint. So you want to make sure that you're not getting uh, exposing that to everyone. Well, actually, we'll want to install one more dependency, um, and that is going to be the SPL token library. So we'll do npm i, and then we're going to do at solana spl dash token. And we'll let that install as well. And what that will allow us to do is it will let us import the uh, token program. And so we will import the token program ID. SPL token, fantastic. So we've got our connection. Next thing I we'll want to do is create a filter. So we'll say const filters, and this is going to be the get program accounts filter, and it's going to be an array of these. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll make this an array and we'll open it up. And the first thing is it's going to be an array of objects. And so we'll do data say data size 165. And then we will also do an object, and this will be an MCP, and that will be an object as well. And it will have an offset of 32, and the bytes will be a wallet. So I'm just going to grab a wallet address that I use for demos here. Uh, we'll just put that in there. Um, and to make this actually a little bit easier to read, we will actually pull this out. Uh, we'll just say here, const wallet is that. And so for the bytes here, we want to be looking for wallet. And now what does this actually mean? So we've got an array of objects. This first one says data size, and this next one says, you know, MCP or MEM CMP. Um, and so data size is actually going to be the amount of bytes that we're looking for. This Git programs this get program accounts filter uh, is kind of like a configuration option that we're going to pass to a method call that we're going to make here in a second called get program accounts. And this is a very common method that you use on Solana, but it can be very, very expensive in the sense like you can return huge objects. Like if you just did get program accounts filter on this uh, token program ID, it would try to get you just every single program or every single token that is on the Solana blockchain. Obviously, that is way, way too much info. So you need to really uh, get used to using these filters whenever you're using this get program accounts call. 
And so what we're doing here is we're limiting, limiting the data size that we're looking for to be 165, because we know that for all of these uh, program accounts that they are going to be 165 is the size uh, that we'll be looking for. Um, and then the next object here is this mem CMP, uh, and it has both this offset and these byte keys. But M mem CMP is short for a memory comparison. Uh, and so not only are we going to filter by uh, a byte size of 165, we're then going to compare once we look at that data size, uh, is there you know a specific amount of bytes in here? And so what we'll do is we'll say, hey, there's going to be an offset of 32, which means in you know this 165 byte long project, we're going to not start at zero, but we're going to start at 32 is where we're expecting this to begin. And there is a wonderful resource on the Solana cookbook that shows you, hey, here's kind of like the shape of this uh, program accounts that we're looking for. Uh, but we know that from this, that wallets start at the 32nd place. And so we're going to offset by 32. And then the bytes that we're looking for to match afterwards is going to be this wallet. So this gives you really fine grain control of what it is exactly that you want to be returning. And the more that you are able to filter this, the faster your Git program accounts is going to be. And so with this, uh, this should already be enough to kind of return like, hey, uh, here's all of the token objects that this particular wallet holds. So what we can do next is we'll just call it. So we'll say const um, token accounts, and then we're gonna await our connection to just get that lowercase connection. We don't like that. That's just going to keep doing that, that autocorrect. So we're actually going to call this uh, Solana. Awesome. And so what we'll do here is we will await Solana dot, oh, that's why. All right, so we need to put that inside the function. That is my bad. And so what we will do is we are going to do solana.git parsed program accounts. And then in here, we're going to say, hey, what's the program ID that we want? So in parsed program accounts, we want the token, want the token program ID. And then we are going to pass it. You can see here it's asking for a git parsed program accounts config. Uh, and so in here, we're just going to put in filters. Excellent. And there's, you can look at the documentation. There's a lot of other things that you can put in the filters, but I think uh, this data size and the memory comparison are going to be what you're using most of the time and is all we need for this particular use case. And so the next thing that we want to do is we have all of these token accounts. So let's just go through them. Uh, so we can say token accounts dot for each. Um, and here we'll say that there is an account and we'll also grab the index here. And what we will do is for each one of these, we'll say like, hey, um, we will say const parsed account info is going to be the account and then it has you can see dot account and then dot data uh, so that will be one um, and then we will want to grab the address so we'll say const address is equal to our parsed account info here and then from there uh, this is actually a very large object um, that has a lot a lot of info in it um, and maybe it's worth it. We'll just do really quickly. Uh, we'll, oh, we will say console.log parsed account info. And we'll just run this really quickly. It would help if we added main here. There we go. And so you can see for each of these, uh, there's this object where it has this uh, parsed, and then there's info, and then there's type, and then there's program, and then there's the space. And so you can see how much uh, every single one of these is going to be 165 since we filtered for that. And all of them are going to be owned by the program SPL token since that's the Git program accounts that we have. Uh, but what we actually want to show is uh, this mint object right here. 
Um, and so what we'll do is we'll actually make this a little bit more specific. We will call this um, the mint address. Uh, and so you can see, looking at this object, we want to grab uh, info.parsed to get around TypeScript complaining. What we will actually do here is we'll just say parsed, actually, we'll say at ts. There we go, fantastic, Ooh. awesome. And so here we can see uh, this will be our mint address. Uh, and then we'll also wanna get the balance. So we'll say const token balance, and that will be parsed account info. And from here, we'll want to grab the um, parsed info dot token amount dot UI amount. And here we'll do the same thing. And so with the parsed account info, the mint address, and the token balance, what we can do here is we can just uh, log all of this out. So I just pasted some logs to save you the trouble of watching me type all of this out. But essentially, you can see that, hey, we are grabbing, um, this is the token account number. And so that's what we grabbed this index for. Uh, it's just for logging purposes to show you, like, hey, here's all the different numbers. And then we're going to say, hey, here's the account's public key, and then we're gonna grab the mint ID and the token balance. And so here, if we clear this up, we can see we can run this. Oh, actually, we didn't save it, so there we go. Let's try this again. We'll make this a little bit bigger so we can all see it. And from here, you can see, all right. So we ran it. And you can see here that we we grab all of the token accounts where it's like, hey, here is the name of this, and here is the mint ID, uh, and then it shows you what the actual token balance is. And so you can see on this account, we've actually got uh, a couple that here are zero. And so you still own the token accounts on Solana, even if you don't own the token within it anymore. So let's say you mint an NFT, and then you trade it to someone else, you will always have uh, that token account that was created to hold the NFT, but whenever you trade it to someone else, your balance just goes from one to zero. So you can see here that we've got all of these different token accounts and they have all of these different mint IDs. Um, and you can see some of them that the token balance is one, uh, which is some of these NFTs or zero. Um, and for some other tokens, you can see here that we've got 40 of whatever this token is. And that is generally speaking how you grab all of it. So I hope that was useful and I'll catch you in the next video.